Creepers and Geekers Chris, the Atari Creep. How's everyone doing today? I put my cover on, only because people hate change. But I'm going to raw dog this one and try to get it done as soon as I can. The girls are probably on their way home. Kind of aggravating. This probably should have been one of those angry uh, road rage videos I haven't done in probably a good year and a half, maybe even two years. But this I say to you, this I say to you, can Atari do anything right? Can they do a goddamn thing right? You know, people, people get mad. You're not a fucking fan of Atari. Because you always puke on them. No, no. In fact, I think just the opposite. I'm going to come straight out and say, uh, you, my friend, are not a real fan of Atari. Because you're not willing to hold them accountable for destroying a legacy they have nothing to do with. But yet, they don't mind riding the coattails on. And today's video is about that exact motherfucking thing. I got a fucking list here. So, I've been really excited about the little two arcades, more so. One, they're manufactured by Blaze. One was supposed to be kind of a five-in-one video game arcade, a traditional one, and the other one, a pawn styled one with two paddles, two rotary knobs, if you will. Found out it was only going to be in the UK, unless you want to pay a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I was upset, so I, I, I begged people, hey, if you're in the UK, I'll give you the shipping. Just can you pick one up for me, please? I'll pay for it. And then I found out you can buy it here, but it's like 60 bucks plus shipping. Fuck that noise. I'll, I'll wait for it to go in the discount bins. But then Willie of Arcade USA uploaded his video yesterday. Uploaded his video. And he, he did it straight up, raw dog, and it just like this. He just, here's the package. I haven't even opened it up yet. Let's look at it. And he opens it up. And we have a look at the whole thing. And then he turns the dial. <laughs> he fucking turns the dial. And it turns out instead of a... Traditional potentiometer, it is a rotary encoder. I didn't really need to do that. I knew what it was. I, I did that for dramatic, dramatic value. Which means instead of having a smooth operation, it does it in clicks. It, it does it in, in steps. Which means to do a simple thing like play Pong, you have to spin and spin and spin just to get the paddle to go up and down. Whereas traditionally, you should only have to do this. Not this. And I saw that and I, I sat hearing it in his voice. I sat hearing the disappointment in his voice. And I sat getting fucking angry. I think this is the first time I actually got angry. Angry at a review <laughs> of something I really wanted. And I think I, I probably would have been more angry if I purchased this and brought it home. I probably would have smashed the fucking thing on camera and just left it at that. I bet you this is exactly what would have happened. I would have started my video off just like his. Hey, look at this, guys. They finally got one. Let's have a look. Open it up. Here's the manual. Here's the unit. I would have fired it up, and I would have played it for like three minutes, and I would have been like, you know what? Fuck this. And I would have smashed it and ended the video right there and still uploaded it because it's raw. It's real. Fuck being who you're not on this damn platform. Atari can't do anything right. They can't fucking do anything right. This guy, Michael. Michael Arts, who owns Atari, is a fucking scumbag. He's a fucking dirtbag, and he's taking what I love, what you love, what we all love, and driving it into the fucking ground. Well, Chris, it was made by Blaze. You know what? Atari's name is all over that thing. It's the largest thing printed on the fucking case. As far as I'm concerned, they are responsible for the quality of this motherfucking thing. They are responsible. Well, Blaze made it, Chris. Well, then Atari. Someone in Atari should have approved it. And what's worse is if they didn't approve it, it tells me they don't give a shit. Constantly playing at, yeah, new location. The girls came home as predicted. Constantly playing off of the nostalgia thing. And not doing it very well, to be honest with you. Like that one thing. How many of these 26 questions did you get right? I bet you they didn't get a single one right. Don't get me started. So they put a rotary encoder in something that needed a potentiometer, okay? If there's one thing that this thing had to get right... The one thing, the one thing that makes this specific unit unique to anything else that would have Atari games on it, it's that simple rotary dial control. And they chose to go with an encoder. They chose to go with an encoder instead of just a simple potentiometer. I got tons of them around the house. I'm sure they're not the right value, but you get what I'm saying. Willie could only get through five of these games, and I heard it. By the time he got to that fifth game, out of 12... You could hear, you could hear it in his voice that inside his mind, he just said, you know what? Fuck this thing. I'm done with the video. Have a nice day. Please subscribe. I did watch another video. Guy was having the same problem. He was able to make it through all 12. 
But it seemed to me from watching Willie's video that you could play Pong and probably get used to it. Same with Breakout. Um, Circus Atari, probably the same deal. Uh, that was a tough one to judge through the video. But Night Driver was nearly impossible to play. And Warlords was absolutely impossible to play. So it just tells me that anyone involved in all three of those people, by the way, at Atari, they don't they don't give a fuck. And I don't understand why you people keep defending him or anything else that they're fucking doing. Because there's nothing to defend. There's nothing. They don't give a shit. They're riding the coattails of a legacy while driving that legacy into the ground. Sure, we have the stuff still. And we can still enjoy it. But you guys keep puking at me about, oh, you're not a real fan. Bitch. You need to hold these people to a higher standard. Something that you supposedly love. And we're there at every step of the fucking way with these guys. I don't get it. It wasn't a very hard thing to fucking do. The one thing that makes this specific unit unique to anything else. Is the one thing that they had to get right. And it was the only thing they got wrong in the fucking thing. Which tells me that nobody within the Atari organization knows what they're doing. Or gives two shits. And you want to spend three, four hundred dollars on a console? From this company. The only thing Atari's giving you is bullshit. Lies. They've lied to you. Straight up lied. Like three or four times. And, and, and shit like this. And shit like this. Thank God at least we have the flashback stuff. Which had been in de development before Michael Arts ever showed up. So there's nothing he can really do to fuck it up really. You know. So. I don't know. I just need to rant. I, I just saw that video last night and it's been fucking eating at me. Maybe that should have been my video this morning instead of Pac-Man, but I think Pac-Man was a better choice. But either way, guys, you can leave your thoughts down below. You're not going to change my mind. Atari's a fucking dumpster fire of a company right now. I really wish Michael Ass would fucking fall into bankruptcy and disappear. I really wish he would fall off the planet. And that's it. Go ahead and leave your feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All feedback to the creep is positive, regardless of how you truly do feel. Guys, thank you always so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for letting me get this off my chest. Whew. Hope you had a great weekend, guys. And until next time, take care. Creep it real. Go Pats. And bye-bye.